Hustlers. I'm here. I'm Kamora, and I'm here with I'm Miss Mitchell, and we are going to be discussing um, what does she think about Women's History Month. So, what do you think about Women's History Month? I think it's really important that we recognize women in history and all the accomplishments that women are doing to make our world a better place. As a matter of fact, I'm wearing one of my shirts today. One of you guys can guess who this person is. Do you know Kamora? No. <laughs> it's Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was a member of the Supreme Court. And one of her sayings was, never underestimate a girl with a book. Okay, so what? why do you think we should like celebrate this more often? Like People should more celebrate it more. Um, we have to recognize the achievements of of groups in our in our country that are not often recognized. So that's why we have things like Black History Month and Hispanic Heritage Month and Pacific A Pacific Islander and Asian Month and Women's History Month because those are groups that have historically been ignored by the country. So now we pick out special times to celebrate their accomplishments and, and I try to do them all. Okay. Um, do you think do you wish that like, there was like more like months that people can be like celebrated like as in like other people? Yes, I really wish there was a time to celebrate each culture individually. And so sometimes it's not a whole month, but like during January, which is World Religions Month, I actually celebrate Chinese Lunar New Year um, in my home and in my classroom. So even though I'm not Chinese, I want to celebrate their culture and I really like how our present is connected to our past and in all different cultures and um, ethnicities. Okay. I'm one of her students. She's great. Bye Skyhawks. Bye Skyhawks. Ruth Bader Ginsburg's rise from a humble Brooklyn neighborhood to the nation's highest court was a classic American story. What is the difference between a bookkeeper in New York's garment district and a Supreme Court justice? Just one generation, my mother's life and mine, bear witness. Where else but in America could that happen? She was smart, tied for first in her class at Columbia Law School. But in the late 50s and early 60s, the glass ceiling stood firm. There were three strikes against her. First, she was a woman. Second, she was Jewish. Third, she had a young child. She turned to teaching law and fighting gender discrimination for the ACLU. Very much with the model of the NAACP's Legal Defense Fund led by Thurgood Marshall, she had this idea that you have to build precedent step by step. In 1980, Ginsburg became a federal appellate court judge. So help me God. So help me God. Thirteen years later, she was named to the Supreme Court by President Clinton, the second woman on the bench. The first, Sandra Day O'Connor, was glad to see her. The minute Justice Ginsburg came to the court, we were nine justices. It wasn't seven and then the women. And it was a great relief to me. As a justice, Ginsburg consistently voted in favor of abortion access and civil rights. Perhaps her best known work on the court, writing the 1996 landmark decision to strike down the Virginia Military Institute's ban on admitting women. She was also known for her bold dissents, like the one she wrote when the court stopped the 2000 Florida ballot recount, struck down a key provision of the Voting Rights Act, and ended the contraception mandate for some businesses under the Affordable Care Act. In our view, the court does not comprehend or is indifferent to the insidious way in which women can be victims of pay discrimination. In 2007, the high court ruled against Lily Ledbetter, a factory supervisor at a tire plant in a high profile pay discrimination case. Ginsburg urged Congress to take up the issue in her dissent. 20 months later, the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act was the first bill that President Obama signed into law. After Justice John Paul Stevens retired in 2010, Ginsburg became the most senior of her liberal colleagues, but she didn't slow down. Stephen Colbert discovered that the hard way, trying to keep up with RBG's famously tough workouts. I'm cramping. I'm working out with an 85-year-old woman. Ginsburg hired a trainer after treatment for colorectal cancer in the late 90s. In 2018, doctors treating the justice for broken ribs discovered cancerous growths on her lung. The surgery was successful, but the recovery caused Ginsburg to miss oral arguments at the Supreme Court for the first time in her career. She was also treated several times for pancreatic cancer, but always stayed up on her court work. Even after losing her husband of 56 years to cancer, 
Ginsburg was back on the bench the next morning. I love the work I do. I think I have the best job in the world for a lawyer. I respect all of my colleagues and genuinely like most of them. Her best friend on the bench was the late Justice Antonin Scalia, her ideological opposite. What's not to like? <laughs> Except her views of the law, of course. <laughs> they shared a laugh about Ginsburg drinking wine before nodding off at the State of the Union. I was 100% sober because before we went to the State of the Union, <laughs> we had dinner together. And Justice Kennedy brought well, in... Well, that's the first intelligent thing you've done. <laughs> <laughs> in her later years, she gained rock star status with millennials, thanks to social media. It was beyond my wildest imagination that I would one day become the notorious RBG. <laughs> The nickname was a play on the name of the late rapper, the Notorious B.I.G. There were books, clothing, tattoos, even a species of praying mantis in her honor, along with a recurring SNL sketch. You just got gives burned. There was a feature film on the basis of sex and a documentary produced by CNN. R.B.G. was an unexpected box office hit and gave the justice an even larger platform to share her lifelong mission of gender equality. People ask me sometimes, when will there be enough women on the court? And my answer is, when there are nine. <laughs> <laughs>